There are many beautiful places on the island of Sodor. The engines love the pretty water mill, the peaceful canals, and the castle on the lock. Toby's favorite place is the old windmill. The windmill is warm. It cannot make much flour now. Toby loves to watch the sails go round, and the miller is his friend. Good morning, Toby. One day, Toby was collecting a load of flour to take to the market. But he was so busy watching the windmill sails that he forgot to look where he was going. The flour was damaged and the miller was upset. If I can't sell my flour, I'll have to shut down the windmill. I'm sorry, sighed Toby. Harvey arrived to put the trucks back on the track. Toby was sad. What will the miller do if his mill shuts down? It's a shame, said his driver, but we must hurry, Toby. There's a storm on the way. Toby couldn't sleep that night. It wasn't the thunder and lightning that kept him awake. He was still worrying about the miller. That stormy night, the old windmill was struck by lightning. The next morning, Toby chuffed carefully along his branch line. The storm had torn trees from the ground and farm buildings had been damaged. Then Toby saw the most shocking sight of all. The windmill is broken, he cried. This means the end of my business, said the miller sadly. I can't afford the timber to make repairs. Toby really wanted to help. There must be a way. Suddenly his driver saw a fallen tree ahead. Harvey and Terence were clearing the track. The fat controller was cross. This storm has caused confusion and delay. Remove this tree immediately. But Toby had an idea. Please, sir, the windmill has been broken. The wood from this tree can mend it and make it work again. A splendid idea, agreed the fat controller. Toby proudly took the tree to the miller. The miller was delighted. Now we can build our windmill back up again. It will be as good as new. Toby watched as the work began. It took a long time, but at last the new windmill was completed. The fat controller was most impressed. The miller was grateful. Thank you, Toby. Your idea saved my windmill. Toby beamed happily. Now the windmill produces more flour than ever before. And Toby makes twice as many deliveries to the market. He never tires of watching the sales go round. And he is very proud that the miller now calls it Toby's Windmill. Donald and Douglas are Scottish twins. They enjoy working on the Fat Controller's Railway. But sometimes they long for Scotland, their old home. One day, the Fat Controller called them to the docks. Mm. 
Lord Callan's Castle is finally reopening. There is to be a grand celebration tomorrow. I need you to take the banners, bunting and bagpipes to the castle. Harvey, you must load them straight away. Yes, sir, chuffed Harvey. The twins were excited. Going to Lord Callan's Castle would be like going home again. Soon, Harvey had finished loading the trucks. Where are you going? asked Percy. Lord Callan's Castle, Donald proudly announced. By Castle Lock. I'm glad I'm not going to Castle Lock, wished Percy nervously. Scared the monster might get you, teased Douglas. He might, said Donald. There's no monster. There is two. There is not. Is two. Is not. Is two. Lord Callan's castle is in Misty Valley. Donald and Douglas were determined to get the important goods to the castle on time. They puffed proudly around the lock toward their destination. There it is, cried Donald. We're almost there, shouted Douglas. But there was trouble ahead. Trees had fallen across the line. Donald and Douglas stopped just in time. Then suddenly, there was a loud crash. The brake van had been hit by a landslide and come off the rails. They were stuck. We could take the causeway, said Donald's driver. Douglas's driver knew the causeway was old and rickety. It's too dangerous, he said. The twins were worried. We'll never get to the castle now, chuffed Donald. I'll call for help, said Douglas's driver. Splendid outfit, sir. The fat controller was trying on his present from Lord Callan when he heard the news. Donald and Douglas, trapped by the lock, he said. I'll send help as soon as I can. But the hours passed. It grew dark and cold, and still no help had come. Suddenly, the twins spotted something strange through the mist. What's that? called Donald. Is it the monster? cried Douglas. But for sure it is, answered Donald. It's not. It's us. It was Harvey and the breakdown crane. Donald and Douglas were relieved. By morning, the lines were clear. Donald and Douglas hurried off to the castle. Lord Callan's workers were waiting to unload the trucks. Soon the castle was decorated and the opening was a great success. Lord Callan was pleased. Ah, a splendid pair of engines. And very useful, added the Fat Controller. Okay, agreed the twins. Reneus is a brave little engine who enjoys working in the mountains on the island of Sodor. Even though he is little, Reneus loves feeling like a really useful engine. One day, the Fat Controller came to see Reneus. I have a very important job for you, he boomed. An important job, cried Reneus. Oh, thank you, sir. You are to take some children up into the mountains. You must make sure they have a wonderful time and are back in time for their tea. Yes, sir, said Reneus, but he was worried. He wasn't sure he was good enough to make the trip special. When Reneus arrived at the station, the children and their teacher were waiting on the platform. How can I make the children's day really special? He said to Rusty. 
You know the mountains better than any engine, said Rusty, but Reneus wasn't sure his best would be exciting enough. He felt like a very little engine indeed. The fat controller had told Reneus's driver to point out all the beautiful sights along the way. This is Sodor Castle, called his driver. It's very special and important. Reneus saw the castle every day. He didn't think it was special or important. I must think of something exciting to do, he puffed to himself. This is Valley View, said his driver. And here's the viaduct. Reneus was still unhappy. The trip didn't seem wonderful to him at all. Must be special, must be special, he puffed. Meanwhile, Rusty was working on the rocky ridge line. Heavy rains had washed the ground from under the tracks. These lines are too bumpy and uneven, said the foreman. The tracks must be closed for repairs. Reneus was still trying to think of something that would make the children's trip special. He didn't know that the linesman had forgotten to switch the points. Suddenly, Reneus was on the wrong track. Oh no, this line is closed for repairs. Bust my buffers, chuffed Reneus. Be careful, cried Rusty. The tracks are very bumpy. Reneus whooshed down the mountain like a roller coaster. The children cheered. Reneus puffed up the rocky ridge with all his might. His carriage clattered and bumped and bounced along behind. And the children ooed and ahed. Reneus chuffed and puffed as hard as he could. He steamed across the trestle bridge. He was going so fast the teacher nearly lost her hat. Reneus splashed under a waterfall. The children laughed happily. And the teacher covered her eyes. At last they could see the station. Reneus was very tired and worried. What would the fat controller say? Phew, said the teacher, just in time for tea. It was the best school trip ever, cried the children. The fat controller wasn't cross with Reneus. He was happy too. You gave the children a wonderful trip. You really are a very useful engine. Oh, thank you, sir, puffed Reneus proudly. Reneus didn't feel like a little engine anymore. The engines love working when the sun shines. One day, Thomas and Percy were helping Salty at the docks, but Salty was worried. It may be sunny now, matey, but there be a storm coming. It may be sunny now, matey, but there be a storm coming. There be a fierce storm on the way, Cap'n, peeped Percy. Salty knew they were making fun of him. He felt sad. Later, the Fat Controller arrived. I want you to fetch Fergus from the smelters. His driver doesn't know the line. Aye, aye, sir, replied Salty sadly. Salty was glad he was going to the smelters. He didn't want to stay where he wasn't liked. What's wrong? asked Emily. Nobody likes being made fun of by silly tank engines. Goodbye. Emily knew she had to find Thomas and Percy immediately. Those be dark clouds, matey, whistled Thomas. There be a fierce storm on the way, Cap'n, peeped Percy. Emily was cross. It's no nice to copy the way others speak. You hurt Salty's feelings. 
We were just having fun, said Percy. We'll say sorry to him, added Thomas. But Salty was nowhere to be found. Thomas and Percy were worried. Fergus was waiting for Salty when he arrived at the smelters. Right on time, congratulated Fergus. Aye, but there's a storm coming, said Salty. We must hurry. Soon they were hooked up and on their way home. Salty was right about the storm. It was a fierce one. The ships at sea depend upon the lighthouse to keep them safely off the rocks. But now there was trouble. The lighthouse lamp has gone out, cried the captain. Salty and Fergus were fighting their way back through the wind and rain. Then Salty saw a lantern ahead. The lighthouse keeper was waiting for him. Our lighthouse lamp has gone out, our generator has broken. Salty had an idea. Fergus has a flywheel, it could power the generator. Hurry, shouted the lighthouse keeper. Fergus's flywheel was attached to the generator shaft. Without the lighthouse, the ship was steaming towards the rocks. Fergus was working as fast as he could. Finally, the generator came back to life. The lighthouse beam shone across the stormy sea once more, just in time. Harder starboard, matey. Salty's idea had saved the day. Fergus worked hard until first light. The next morning, Salty and Fergus chugged back to the docks. They were surprised to see a crowd waiting for them. Thank you, said the captain. You saved our ship. Well done, boomed the fat controller. Salty was very proud. We're sorry if we hurt your feelings, huffed Thomas. We were only copying you because we think you're grand. Then say no more, me arties, replied Salty happily. Now they will all work together and have fun together, as good friends should. Oliver and Duck are great western engines. They deliver goods and passengers when the roads are closed by deep snow. Oliver thinks snow is messy and cold. I'm a great western engine, he chuffed one day. I shouldn't have to shiver. Begging your pardon, Mr. Oliver, said Toad, but I think snow is splendid. Harumph. Later, Oliver saw some children building a giant snowman for the winter festival. Each time Oliver passed by, the snowman grew bigger. And bigger. And bigger. And bigger. Just an observation, Mr. Oliver. Snow is magical. Pa. Finally, the snowman was complete. Oliver chuffed back to his warm, cosy shed. The fat controller was waiting for him. You have to return to the mountain village. Some goods are needed for the festival. But all this snow makes my wheels feel chilly. Really useful engines work hard, whatever the weather. 
Soon Oliver was loaded and on his way. The snow was cold. It had frozen the points and diverted Oliver into the station sidings. Oh, shiver my boiler, cried Oliver. His driver applied the brakes. Is there a problem, Mr. Oliver? Yes! There is! That could have been a little smoother. Oliver felt awful. He thought the children would be upset about their snowman. Oliver's driver went for help. The fat controller was just leaving his office when he got the call. Meow. Duck will bring the breakdown crane first thing in the morning, he said. Oliver's driver returned and told him the news. I'll be out here all night, <laughs> moaned Oliver. I'm afraid so. Luckily, the village inn had a toasty warm room for Oliver's driver. But Oliver was getting colder and colder. His fire had gone out and his funnel was covered in icicles. <laughs> I was right all along. There's nothing magical about snow. <laughs> Toad was beginning to think Oliver might be right. Brrr. Next morning, the children saw the situation. Look, a little girl shouted. Our snowman has eyes in its tummy. No, it doesn't, laughed a little boy. It's Oliver. That gave the children an idea. When Oliver woke up, he was surrounded by happy children. Oliver's a wonderful snow engine, they cried. Oliver was so relieved that suddenly he didn't feel cold anymore. When Duck arrived with the breakdown crane, Oliver didn't want to leave. He was enjoying the winter festival so much. You were right, Toad, Oliver called. There are some magical things about snow. Perhaps, Mr. Oliver, shivered Toad. <laughs> Definitely. Arthur loves working on the island of Sodor. He is new to the railway and is still learning his way around. One morning he discovered the fishing village. The sun made the water sparkle and the seagulls called across the harbour. This was Arthur's favourite place. That evening, the fat controller came to the shed. There's going to be a new line to the fishing village. I have to decide which engine is going to run it. He paused impressively. Thomas and Percy looked away. They had enough work to do. Arthur hoped he would be chosen. Thomas, you will work on the new line. Yes, sir, said Thomas, but he really didn't like the smell of fish. Arthur was disappointed. The fat controller sent him to haul coal to the steelworks. That evening, Thomas was at the washdown when Arthur puffed in. Do I smell a fishy engine? He teased. Yes, huffed Thomas. Smelly fish, smelly new line. Arthur wished he could go to the fishing village instead of the steelworks. He'd be much happier than Thomas. The next morning, Thomas was still grumpy. The fisherman had caught lots of fish. Hurry up, said Thomas. I'm a busy engine. And a fussy one too, said the fisherman. Just enjoy the fresh, salty smell of the fish. Phew, puffed Thomas. Thomas steamed as fast as he could along the line. But there was trouble ahead. Some faulty points sent his trucks one way and Thomas onto the old pier rail. The trucks were delighted. 
He's fallen in the water. Luckily, Thomas wasn't hurt and the fish truck stayed on the tracks. When the fat controller heard the news, he checked his timetable. Arthur is the nearest engine. I'll send him right away. It was a hot day. The ice that was keeping the fish cold started to melt. I hope someone comes quickly, moaned Thomas. That fish will go off soon. Arthur was surprised to see Thomas in the tidal pool. Are you all right, Thomas? No, but I'll be much better when you take these fish away. The breakdown van will be here soon, called Arthur's driver. Arthur knew he had to hurry. He raced along the line to the docks and arrived there just in time. Later, Arthur went to see Thomas at the fitter's yard. Thank you for helping me, said Thomas. Thank you, said Arthur. I wish I had the fishing village line all the time. Then tell the fat controller, because I don't like fish. That evening, the fat controller came to the shed. I need an engine to go to the fishing village while Thomas is being repaired, he said. Any volunteers? Me, Arthur blurted out. And please, sir, may I run on that line all the time? Thomas doesn't like fish, but I do. Then the line is yours, said the Fat Controller. Arthur was delighted. The next morning, he puffed into the fishing village right on time. The smell of fish was everywhere. But he was sure he had the most beautiful line on the island of Sodor. The engines on the island of Sodor were excited. A new park was being built. Everyone was working hard to get the job finished on time. Duncan was feeling impatient. Get a move on, slow coach, he puffed crossly to Rusty. You're so slow, I'll finish first, Duncan boasted to Scar Lowy. Scar Lowy was cross. A little later, he met Rusty at the new park station. Duncan thinks he's fast, Scar Lowy steamed, but he's just a bossy boiler. Better safe than fast, Rusty agreed. Duncan drew into the station. He was all puffed up and pleased with himself. I finished first, he wished proudly. In that case, said the Fat Controller, I've got another job for you. You're to collect the elephant on the sidings and take it to the park. Yes, sir, chuffed Duncan. This elephant is very important. You must be very careful. When Duncan saw the elephant, he was surprised. Why, it's only a statue, he said. This is an easy job. You must wait for the brake van, said the station master. This statue is very heavy. Nonsense, huffed Duncan to his driver. I've pushed heavier loads than this plenty of times. Let's go, Duncan, said his driver, but we must be careful. So they left, but without the brake van. But Duncan wasn't careful. He was impatient. We'll show them how fast I am, Duncan whistled. We'll deliver this statue and I'll still finish first. Duncan started to speed up. Soon, Duncan was going as fast as his wheels could carry him. His driver was starting to worry. So he tried to brake, but Duncan was out of control. 
He was scared. He had never gone this fast. People waved and cars tooted as Duncan sped by. Suddenly, a tractor trundled across Duncan's line. Look out, shouted his driver. Slow down, whistled Rusty. I can't, Duncan cried as he shot past. Elephant Park loomed ahead. Duncan's driver applied the brakes. But it was too late. The statue flew through the air. And landed in the lake. Luckily, nobody was hurt. In no time, the fat controller arrived. He was cross. I told you to be careful. You should have waited for the brake van, he said sternly. I'm sorry, sir, mumbled Duncan. He felt very embarrassed. <laughs> Duncan was repaired in time for the opening of Elephant Park. He was very surprised to see the statue still standing in the lake. Everyone loves the elephant in the lake, said Lady Hatch. Even if it was a mistake, added the fat controller. Hooray for Duncan's mistake, cheered the engine. Duncan blushed and went a deep shade of red. Hurry up, I'm a busy engine, huffed Henry. Goods arrive night and day at the docks. Sometimes Henry and the other engines work so hard that their axles ache. The fat controller brought in a new engine to help with the heavy workload. He was long and had ten drive wheels. He looked very strong. This is Murdoch. He's going to be pulling freight on the main line. Ahoy, Murdoch! shouted Salty. Welcome, Murdoch, called Harvey. You're the biggest engine I've ever seen, cried Thomas. You're a chatty lot, Murdoch said quietly. Soon, Murdoch was coupled to a long, long line of heavy trucks. His boiler strained, his wheels started to turn, and the mighty engine chuffed away. Murdoch longed for some peace and quiet. But everywhere he went, it was noisy and crowded. At the end of the day, Murdoch was looking forward to a good night's rest. But Salty and Harvey were full of questions. What's the longest train you've ever pulled? Have you worked Marseille? Have you ever crashed? Please, Murdoch chuffed. I want some peace and quiet, and I don't want to share a shed with chatterboxes. No need to be rude, huffed Harvey. We're only being friendly, mighty. The next morning, Murdoch collected another long, heavy train. This time, he chuffed into the beautiful countryside. It was splendid. At last, he had some peace and quiet. Suddenly, his driver applied the brakes. There were sheep on the tracks. The sheep escaped from that field, said the driver, through that broken fence. They tried to chase the sheep back. First this way, and then that way. They tried everything, but nothing worked. We'll never move these sheep by ourselves, complained the fireman. I'll go and phone for help, sighed the driver. Murdoch was very unhappy. The noisy sheep were spoiling his peace and quiet. The fat controller was enjoying afternoon tea when he got the call. Sheep? he exclaimed loudly. I'll send Toby with the farmer immediately. 
The sheep were becoming noisier and noisier. Please stop, groaned Murdoch. I'd rather be back with the chatterbox engines. Just then, Toby chuffed into view. Toby, exclaimed Murdoch, we're certainly glad to see you. Before long, the farmer and his dog went to work. And the sheep were soon safely back in their field. And Murdoch was on his way again. That evening, Murdoch parked between Harvey and Salty, but Murdoch spoke first. I'm sorry that I was cross, he chuffed. I'm very pleased to share a shed with you. And we're pleased to have your company, said Harvey. Aye, we are, added Salty. It reminds me of a story. Murdoch smiled. The sound of bar, bar, bar would have kept him awake, but a Salty story would send him happily to sleep. Thomas and Fergus, the traction engine, are friends. Fergus is the pride of the cement works. He knows all the rules and obeys them. One day, the fat controller brought devious diesel to the cement works. I need diesel to help for a while. Please show him around. Yes, said Fergus unhappily. He knew that diesel could be trouble. Later, Diesel was being careless. Not like that, snapped Fergus. Do it right. Don't interfere, sneered Diesel. You don't know the rules, retorted Fergus. Diesel was very annoyed with Fergus and started plotting a devious plan. Later that day, he pretended to have news for Fergus. The fat controller wants you to work at the smelters. Me? But I'm the pride of the cement works. Not anymore. The fat controller says I'm better than you, so I'm going to stay here. It's not fair. I love working here. But he knew that really useful engines have to do as they are told. Fergus and his driver arrived at the smelters. I want to go back to the cement works, wailed Fergus. None of the other engines like coming here. It's so scary. You're right, said his driver. Just then, the scrap diesels arrived. Hello, are you happy to be here? No, cried Fergus. His driver was scared too. Come on, Fergus, we're going to escape. And for the first time, Fergus broke the rules. The fat controller was enjoying a tasty supper of kippers when he heard that Fergus was missing. That's not like Fergus. There must be something wrong. I will send Thomas to look for him. Fergus and his driver turned onto a disused track to find a place to hide. Fergus was frightened. So was Thomas. He puffed up and down the line. He couldn't see Fergus anywhere. We could search the old mine track, said his driver. That line is dark and spooky, whispered Thomas, but he had to be brave and find Fergus. Fergus was on a siding. His fire had gone out. Then it happened. It's an engine, he cried. Fergus, whistled Thomas. Whatever are you doing out here? Hiding. Don't want to work at the smelters. The fat controller is going to be cross with me. He's not, cried Thomas. He's worried about you. Really? Of course. Thomas. Fergus felt better. 
Thomas pulled Fergus all the way to the smelter's yard, where he knew the fat controller was waiting. Fergus, explain yourself. I ran away. It's scary here. Diesel told Fergus that you wanted him at the smelters forever, said Thomas. Nonsense, Fergus. You are the pride of the cement works. I shall send Diesel to the smelters and you can go back to the cement works tomorrow. Oh, thank you, sir, said Fergus happily. Fergus knew he had a good friend in Thomas. And he was still the pride of the cement works.